We're going to talk about a particular type of heat engine. It's called the Carnot engine. Uh, no Carnot engine exists in nature, but it, and it's an idealization, but it's a very important idealization because it gives us an upper limit on the efficiency that you can get of a heat engine. So to understand the Carnot engine, we first need to grapple with the idea of reversible processes. Uh, and just a little hint of things to come, the Carnot engine is a reversible process all the way through. So a reversible process is one in which both the system and its surroundings return to exactly the same states that they were in before the process occurred. So reversible doesn't mean uh, like an engine that you can put it in reverse and, and, and go backwards down the street. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, it means that no energy is lost to friction anywhere along the line. That at, at every point you're not losing any energy to, to friction and that the surroundings can return to the same state. So if you had, for example, um, well, an automobile engine is not reversible. Um, it's irreversible in the sense that there's friction that uh, is created between the piston and the cylinder. And that renders the, uh, and there's other forms of friction that come in, Render, renders it not reversible or irreversible. So uh, what's the definition of the Carnot engine? The Carnot engine is a reversible engine in which the hot and cold reservoirs are held at constant temperatures. Nowhere so far have we talked about uh, the temperatures of the hot and cold reservoirs or whether they need to be constant or not. In, in general, a heat engine doesn't have constant temperature or reservoirs, but in a Carnot engine it does. So the hot reservoir is maintained at some constant temperature and the cold reservoir is maintained at some lower constant temperature. And as the work is done and the heat is exchanged, these, con these reservoirs stay at the same, te same temperatures. So that's what we mean by a Carnot engine. If, if you just want to remember it as it's a heat engine with constant temperature reservoirs, that's pretty much um, what we're talking about. Now Carnot's principle, uh, he, uh, Mr. Carnot, um, came up with this principle, and it's very fundamental. No irreversible engine that's operating between two reservoirs at constant temperatures can have a greater efficiency than a reversible engine operating between the same temperatures. In other words, the highest efficiency that you can get is with a reversible engine. No, um, yeah. Furthermore, all reversible engines operating between the same two temperatures have the same efficiency. So it's really an alternative statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Very interesting, very fundamental. Let's derive the efficiency of the Carnot engine. Efficiency of an engine is the work done. That's what we're trying to get, as much work out of it as possible. We're trying to minimize the amount of input heat. And we can solve this equation for W. So W is going to be QH minus QC. So here's that W. It's QH minus QC. And we're dividing everything by QH. So QH over QH is just 1. QC over QH is QC over QH. Funny how they figure that out. Then we have to use some little hocus pocus here and argue the following. The efficiency of a reversible engine does not depend on the working substance of the engine. Doesn't matter if it's a gas or whatever it is, or what type of gas. It doesn't care. It depends only on the reservoir temperatures in Kelvin. And therefore, the ratio of these heats, QC over QH, had better depend only on the upper and the lower temperatures. So the argument here is that QC over QH 
has to be, has to depend only on the temperatures. And the only way that this can happen is that it is proportional to those temperatures. The heat expelled to the cold reservoir divided by the heat that comes from the hot reservoir, the, the output heat divided by the input heat is the output temperature divided by the input temperature, remembering that these uh, reservoirs stay at the same temperature. So if you um, believe these arguments, then you can plug this in here, replace QC over QH by TC over TH. Now this is an interesting result that basically says that the bigger the difference between the cold and the hot temper, the, the temper, the bigger the difference between the reservoir temperatures, <laughs> the more efficient it will be. Let's say uh, the extreme example would be if uh, the temperature of the cold reservoir were, were zero. And I'm going to remind you here that these temperatures are measured in Kelvin. This whole argument, this whole chapter is with temperatures measured in Kelvin. I guess the only exception is the example that we did with the um, um, specific heat capacity and we use Celsius. Um, so now, if that uh, temperature of the cold reservoir is zero, then this guy is going to be zero, and we get an efficiency of one. An efficiency of one means it's 100% efficient. Well, you can never get a temperature of the cold reservoir to be zero. And, and so the more you raise that, and the closer the TC is to TH, the lower the efficiency is. If TC equals TH, if there's no difference between the temperatures of the cold and hot reservoirs, then the efficiency is going to be zero. So you need a temperature difference. The bigger, the better to create an efficient heat engine. So an example, water near the surface of a tropical ocean has a temperature of 298.2 Kelvin whereas the water 700 meters beneath the surface has a temperature of 280.2 Kelvin. It's been proposed that the warm water be used as the hot reservoir and the cool water as the cold reservoir of a heat engine. Find the maximum possible efficiency. Now remember, uh, for any process, the most efficient process is going to be the reversible process, and that's the Carnot engine. And that's the 1 minus TC over TH, what we just talked about. For any irreversible process, which this would probably be since it's practical, since there's no reversible process that you can actually do that I know of, um, this just sets an upper limit on the efficiency. But it's not a very efficient, uh, it doesn't have the potential to be a very efficient engine. Because look at these two numbers are not that different from each other. 1 minus 280 over 298. So that's an efficiency of only 6%. That's pretty ho-hum.